Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to day 64 of the Bhakti Vaibhava Simana on Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 4. We are in the 24th chapter of the 4th Canto, chapters entitled Chanting the Song Sung by Lord Shiva. First of all, let us chant our prayers. <coughs> Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharane Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarane Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Shivas Adi Gaura Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. <coughs> Vanchkalpa Trulubius Chakripas Indubia Evacha. Paditanam Pavanebio Vaishnavebio Namo Namaha. Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Yes, devotees, so welcome to day 64. And we are at the end, more or less, of the 24th chapter of the 4th Canto. Our last section here, section 5, is from verse 69 to verse 79, and it's titled, Lord Shiva Instructs the Prachetas. Yes. So, so in other words, there's sort of a change over. There is a change over from... The previous section, which was Lord Shiva addressing the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. Now, as, as the uh, section title um, states quite clearly, now there's a change. Lord Shiva is going to be instructing the Prachetas what to do. So let's read verse 69. My dear sons of the king, just execute your occupational duty as kings with a pure heart. Just chant this prayer, fixing your mind on the lotus feet of the Lord. That will bring you all good fortune, for the Lord will be very much pleased with you. And we'll just now we'll do the verses. So that was verse 69, next verse 70. Therefore, O sons of the King, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Hari, is situated in everyone's heart. He is also within your hearts. Therefore, chant the glories of the Lord and always meditate upon Him continuously. 71. My dear princes, in the form of a prayer, I have, deline I have delineated the yoga system of chanting the holy name. All of you should take this important stotra within your minds and promise to keep it in order and promise to keep it in order to become great sages by acting silently like a great sage and by giving attention and reverence. You should practice this method. Verse 72. This prayer was first spoken to us by Lord Brahma the master of all creators. The creators headed by Brigu were instructed in these prayers because they wanted to create. Verse 73, when all the prajapatis were ordered to create by Lord Brahma, we chanted these prayers in praise of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and became completely free from all ignorance. Thus we were able to create different types of living entities. 74. A devotee of Lord Krishna, whose mind is always absorbed in him, who with great attention and reverence chants the stotra prayer, will achieve the greatest perfection of life without delay. 75. In this material world there are different types of achievements, but of, but of all of them the achievement of knowledge is considered to be the highest because one can cross the ocean of nescience 
only on the boat of knowledge. Otherwise, the ocean is impassable. 76. Although rendering devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and worshipping Him are very difficult, if one vibrates or simply reads the Stotra prayer composed and sung by me, he will very easily be able to invoke the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 77. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the dear most objective of all auspicious benedictions. A human being who sings the song sung by me can please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such a devotee, being fixed in the Lord's devotional service, can acquire whatever he wants from the Supreme Lord. 78. A devotee who rises early in the morning and with folded hands chants these prayers sung by Lord Shiva and gives facility to others to hear them, certainly becomes free from all bondage to fruitive activities. 79. My dear sons of the King, the prayers I've recited to you are meant for pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Super Soul. I advise you to recite these prayers, which are as effective as great austerities. In this way, when you are mature, your life will be successful, and you will certainly achieve all your desired objectives without fail. So that's actually the end of this chapter. Uh, chapter 24, chanting the song sung by Lord Shiva. Anyway, now we've got to go through uh, again with uh, uh, reading the verses again and then going through the purports. So first of all, verse 69, Lord Shiva's speaking. My dear sons of the king, just execute your occupational duty as kings with a pure heart. Just chant this prayer fixing your mind on the lotus feet of the Lord. That will bring you all good fortune, for the Lord will be very much pleased with you. Okay, so Prabhupada, first of all, makes the point that uh, prayers by Lord Shiva are authoritative, yes, um, and Simply by offering prayers, you can become perfect, uh, even though you're doing some sort of varnashram occupational duty. So the purpose of life is to become a devotee. Doesn't matter what's, what's your varna or ashram, nationality, etc., etc. You can just do devotional service anywhere by praying to the Lord. Hare Krishna mantra is also a prayer. Uh, addressing the Lord and Srimati Radharani, and and it's a, a, an appeal for him to allow us to engage in devotional service. And Prabhupada gives a translation of the Hare Krishna mantra, My dear Lord Krishna, my dear Lord Ram, O energy of the Lord, Hare, kindly engage me in your service. So, it doesn't matter what your position is. You may be in a lowly position, high position, doesn't matter. You can engage in devotional service in any circumstance. I took Yaprati Hata. Srimad Bhagavatam 126 says devotional service cannot be checked by any material condition. So uh, Lord Chaitanya also recommended this process. Uh, which is actually spoken in Srimad Bhagavatam 10.14.3. I won't read the whole verse, but the translation that Prabhupada gives here is, one may remain situated in his own place or his own occupational duty and still lend his ear to receive the message of the Lord from realized souls. Yeah, so Prabhupada concludes the purport by saying, the Krishna consciousness movement is based on this principle, and we're opening centers all over the world 
to give everyone a chance to hear the message of Lord Krishna in order to go back home back to Godhead. Therefore, O sons of the King, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Hari is situated in everyone's heart. He is also within your hearts. Therefore, chant the glories of the Lord and always meditate upon Him continuously. So, let's have a look at the purport. Srila Prabhupada begins by saying that the word asakrit is significant because it means not just for a few minutes, but continuously. This is, this is Lord Chaitanya's instruction in Shikshastaka 3, Kirtaniya Sada Hari. Sada means just non-stop, constantly, 24 hours a day. So therefore, in Iskand Prabhupada says, we request the devotees to chant at least 16 rounds every day. Ideally, we, we should chant 24 hours a day like Haridas Thakur. Raghunath Das Goswami also chanted very rigidly and other of the Goswamis. So Prabhupada refers to Srinivas Acharya's Sad Goswami Yastakam, Sankhya Nama Namagana Natabi Kalavasani Krito that the six Goswamis, this is what he's saying, the six Goswamis were always chanting the holy names of the Lord. Sankhya Purvaka means maintaining a numerical strength. In other words, some specific number uh, and, you know, quite, quite a serious number, not a, a, a s small number. So, and, and Prabhupada also means that, mentions that Raghunath Das Goswami, also one of the six Goswamis, he was chanting the holy names, you know, so many times a day, but he was also offering obeisances according to certain number, a certain number. Obeisances to deities, obeisances to devotees. So here we have now the second paragraph that because the princes, the prachetas, were ready for severe austerities and, and penances to worship the Lord, Shiva told them, constantly chant, constantly meditate on the Lord. And it's also significant that Lord Shiva personally offered his prayers to the Lord as he was taught by his father, Lord Brahma. Yeah. So, and now he's preaching it to the Prachetas, according to Parampara. So, therefore, the point is, you shouldn't just practice the instructions of the spiritual master, but you should distribute the knowledge to your own disciples. Or in other words, you should distribute the knowledge, um, yeah, widely. Um, okay, third paragraph. Prabhupada says the words atmanam atmastam sarvabhutesh vavastitam, which basically means the Lord is in everyone's heart. So Prabhupada says this is significant. The Lord is the origin of all living entities. He's the Father. You can find him easily in the heart. He's in everyone's heart. So it's interesting. Prabhupada makes the point that in this verse, the process of worshipping the Lord is considered to be very easy and complete. Anyone can do it. Prabhupada concludes the purport by saying, anyone can sit down anywhere and in any condition of life and simply chant the holy names of the Lord. By chanting and hearing, one automatically engages in meditation. Verse 71. My dear princes, in the form of a prayer, I have delineated 
the yoga system of chanting the holy name. All of you should take this important stotra within your minds and promise to keep it in order to become great sages. By acting silently like a great sage and by giving attention and reverence, you should practice this method. Okay, so Prabhupada makes the point that if you're going to do hatha yoga, you have to do bodily exercises and so on, dhyana, dharana, etc. You have to sit in a certain way, look, look at the tip of your nose perhaps, many rules and regulations. So <laughs> it's really extremely, Prabhupada says practically impossible, really hard to do it now properly, not, not possible. But bhakti yoga, Krishna consciousness is very easy. Anytime, anywhere. Lord, Lord Shiva's teaching it. This is back in Satya Yuga. So it's not new. 5,000 years ago, Lord Krishna recommended it as the topmost yoga. Um, he told Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, verse 47. I'll just read the translation. Of all yogis, he who always abides in me with great faith, worshipping me in transcendental loving service, is most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. So on to the second paragraph. And Prabhupada, um, what would you say? He just sort of confirms what's said by Lord Krishna in this uh, Bhagavad Gita chapter 6 verse 47 that, that he who con continuously thinks of Krishna chants his glories is the topmost yoga, yogi and we should note that the system of bhakti yoga has been existing from time immemorial and now it's continuing in this Krishna consciousness movement so third paragraph, Prabhupada says the word Muni Vrata is significant here because those interested in advancing spiritually must be silent, silent. Muni Vrata means a, uh, a vow, a vow, uh, a, the vow of well, in the word for word, you can have a look and see. Prabhupada translates Muni Vrata as just take the vow of the great sages, the vow of silence. Okay. So, so what does that mean, devotees? Uh, what does that mean? Tell us. What it means, Prabhupada explains, is not just not saying anything at all but only talking Krishna Kata. And this was the silence, Prabhupada points out, of Maharaj Ambarish, such an important person in our line. And Prabhupada quotes Bhagavatam 9419, just a couple of lines of the, uh, the verse itself, but uh, Prabhupada translates it, King Ambarish always fixed his mind on the lotus feet of the Lord and talked of him only. Right. So fourth paragraph, or just what follows on after this Maharaj Ambarish verse, Prabhupada says we should take the opportunity to become saintly by not talking unnecessarily with unwanted persons. Why do that? either talk of Krishna or chant Hare Krishna. And this is, this is Muni Vrata, right? So in, one's intelligence has to be sharp. Samahita Diya. And should always be Krishna conscious, intelligence. Prabhupada concludes the purport by saying, the words Etad Abhyasata Drita, indicate that if one takes these instructions from a spiritual master with great reverence, Adrita, 
and practices them accordingly, he will find this bhakti yoga process to be very, very easy. That's really wonderful, isn't it? That is just wonderful. Verse 72, Lord Shiva says, This prayer was first spoken to us by Lord Brahma, the master of all creators. The creators headed by Brigu were instructed in these prayers because they wanted to create. So, Prabhupada gives some chronology, little chronology, of births at the beginning of the universe. First Lord Brahma, then from Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, then other great sages headed by Bhrigu Muni, uh, which included Marichi, Atreya Vishista, and others. And they were all in charge of creating population from Brahma. But Prabhupada makes the point that, um, that even though they were involved in creating on such a scale, at the same time, Prabhupada says, Prabhupada cautioned his sons by reciting uh, these prayers of Lord Shiva. What are called the prayers of Lord Shiva. Shiva got them from Brahma. Because, of course, material creation means material engagement. But if we always remember our relationship with the Lord as described by Lord Shiva, then the influence of material engagements can be counteracted. It'll keep us always in touch with Krishna. So therefore, if we do like that, then whatever our service is, we won't be deviated from Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada makes the point that this is why He's created this Krishna consciousness movement. Everyone, everyone in the Krishna consciousness movement has some duty. Yes. And everyone just in this world has some duty, which can be seen generally from the Vanashram perspective. But the first duty is to keep in contact with the Lord. If we do like that, everything will be successfully successful. But if you do some Varnashram duty, uh, but don't remember your relationship with the Lord, then, then everything you do will just be a waste of time. And this is confirmed by Srimad Bhagavatam 1 to 8, which says, the same thing, if you do your Varnashram duty without um, connection with the Lord, then what is the result? It's Shrama Eva Hi Kevalam. Shrama means a waste of time. Eva means definitely. He means certainly. Kevalam means only. It is, it is certainly, definitely, only a waste of time. How's that? That's pretty, pretty clear. So anyway, the, the next paragraph, what is it? Paragraph two, I guess. So even if you are busy with your duty, it doesn't have to hamper your Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Just execute the devotional service of hearing and chanting while you're doing your duty, just hear and chant and remember Krishna. And you don't need to give up your occupational duty. Prabhupada, in that regard, quotes Bhagavad Gita 1846. Let me just read the translation. By worship of the Lord, who is the source of all beings and who is all pervading, man can in the performance of his own duty, attain perfection. Thus, one can continue with one's Varnashram duty. But if you worship the Lord as Lord Shiva is saying, you, you perfect your life. Prabhupada concludes the purport by saying, 
Svanustitasya Dharamasya Sangsidim Hari Toshanam, which is from Srimad Bhagavatam 1213, basically means we should continue executing our occupational duties. But if we try to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead by our duties, then our lives will be perfected. Verse 73. When all the prajapatis were ordered to create by Lord Brahma, we chanted these prayers in praise of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and became completely free from all ignorance. Thus we were able to create different types of living entities. Right. So, Prabhupada, oh, this is very powerful, really um, chastises Darwin and the theory of evolution. Prabhupada makes the point that from this verse, we can understand that all types of living entities were created simultaneously at the beginning. And Prabhupada says, the nonsensical Darwinian theory of evolution is not applicable here. It's not that there were no intelligent people way back, millions of years ago, back right back at the initial time of creation. And in fact, on the contrary, Lord Brahma is the most intelligent person and he was the first one to create. And then others, saintly personalities, highly intelligent, um, came along and they also created under his supervision. So we get a particular type of body on the basis of higher authority, those who are appointed by the Lord, like Lord Brahma and the Prajapatis. So Brahma Vaivata Prabhupada mentions, refers to Brahma Vaivata Purana, which says that there is evolution, but not on the level of the body, the bodies of the different species changing and developing in different ways, but evolution in the sense of the spirit soul uh, being, being elevated, being promoted. Yes, Prabhupada says it is the spiritual entity or spiritual spark within the body that is being promoted by the laws of nature under the supervision of superior authority. Right, not the body, the bodies developing over a period of time within a particular species. So therefore, due to our lack of knowledge, we can't see things in the, the right perspective. So now the second paragraph, Srila Prabhupada says, that, that here the word dvasta tamasa, being freed, freed from all types of ignorance, is very important. If you don't become free from ignorance, you can't control the creation uh, of different types of living entities. How on earth could you do that? Yeah, certainly not possible. So Prabhupada refers to Bhagavatam 3.31.1, Daiva Netrena. Bodies are awarded under the supervision of superior powers. That's basically what Daiva Netrena means or indicates. Uh, so, how can these superior powers, her controlling like universal things, how can they control the evolutionary process of the living entity if they're not free from imperfections? Prabhupada concludes the purport by saying that the followers of Vedic instructions cannot accept the Darwinian theory of evolution, for it is, it is mad 
by imperfect knowledge. It is mad. It is just spoilt badly. Verse 74, a devotee of Lord Krishna whose mind is always absorbed in him, who with great attention and reverence chants the stotra prayer, will achieve the greatest perfection of life without delay. Perfection of life. So Prabhupada begins the purport by asking, What's, what is this perfection? And he says it means to become a devotee of Krishna. Yes. And Prabhupada refers to the first canto of the Bhagavatam, 1 to 28, which, among other things, makes the point that the ultimate goal of life is Vasudev or Krishna. So any devotee of Krishna can attain all perfection, even material gains, even liberation. Yeah, simply by offering prayers to the Lord. There are all sorts of prayers to the Lord by great sages like Lord Brahma, Brahma Samhita, Lord Shiva, these prayers here. Uh, yeah, Krishna is known as Shiva Varinchi Nutam. That's from 11th Canto, chapter 5, verse 5, 33. Varinchi's Lord Brahma. Yeah. So both of them are, it means both of them are offering prayers to Krishna. So if we follow their footsteps, become devotees of Krishna, our lives will be successful. And, you know, unfortunately, the people in general don't know that. They're just trying to adjust the external material energy. So if you don't become a devotee, it is inevitable. Your life will be baffled. So to save the living entities from this very unfortunate situation, yeah, Lord Krishna points out in Bhagavad Gita 7.19, let me just read the translation. It's, it's Bahunam Janmanam Ante, by the way. And translation, after many, many births and deaths, a wise man surrenders unto me, knowing very well that I, Vasudev, and am everything. Such a great soul is very rare. Rare. So Prabhupada concludes the purport by saying, we can achieve whatever benediction we want simply by becoming devotees of Vasudev. Vasudev meaning Lord Krishna. Verse 75. In this material world, there are different types of achievement. But of all of them, the achievement of knowledge is considered to be the highest because one can cross the ocean of nescience only on the boat of knowledge. Otherwise, the, the ocean is impassable. You cannot cross it. So Srila Prabhupada makes the point in the first paragraph of the purport. Everyone suffering here in this world due to ignorance. People and Prabhupada says, every day we see someone in ignorance commits some crime, is arrested and punished. Despite the fact he, might, he may not have known that he was doing something sinful. Yeah. That such ignorance is throughout the world. People don't consider how they're risking their lives to do things like illicit sex, they don't realize what reactions they're going to get from performing illicit sex life, from killing animals for eating, or taking intoxication, gambling. They don't know. They think it's normal. And the leaders don't know either, which is very regrettable, Prabhupada says. Rather, they take things lightly and make, Prabhupada says, their success, the leaders 
as succeeding in making the ocean of nescience wider and wider. Right, so second paragraph, Prabhupada makes the point that opposed to ignorance, full knowledge is the greatest achievement in this world. <clears throat> and we can see that someone who has knowledge, sufficient knowledge, just in everyday life, they're saved from many dangerous pitfalls. Yes. So Prabhupada again refers to Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, verse 19. Bahunam janmanam ante, gyanavam maam prapadyate. When one actually becomes wise, he surrenders unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vasudeva sarvamiti, such a great soul is very rarely to be found. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's like third or fourth time today we've encountered this verse in one form or another. So third paragraph. This movement, Krishna consciousness movement, is determined to open the eyes of the so-called leaders and save them from all the pitfalls of life here. And, and including the greatest danger is that of getting a body lower than human next time. So we've all got these human bodies. How did we get them? We don't know exactly, but in principle we know it must have been extremely difficult. And the idea behind us getting these bodies is so we can use them and reestablish our relationship with Krishna, Govinda. So Prabhupada concludes the purport by saying, Lord Shiva advises, however, that those who take advantage of his prayers will very soon become devotees of Lord Vasudev and thus will be able to cross the ocean of nescience and make life perfect. Verse 76. Although rendering devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead and worshipping Him are very difficult, if one vibrates or simply reads this stotra, this prayer, um, composed and sung by me, he will very easily be able to invoke the mercy of the Supreme personality of Godhead. All right, let's have a look at the purport. You know, Prabhupada makes the point that it's especially significant. Lord Shiva is a pure devotee of Vasudev, Lord Krishna. Topmost Vaishnav, Vaishnavanam Yatashambhu. And he has a Sampradaya, Rudra Sampradaya. And, and later on, Vishnu Swami carried the Rudra Sampradaya forward further. So, in one sense, to become a devotee of Lord Krishna, Vasudev, Prabhupada says, is very, very difficult. The word used here is Dura Radhyam. Dura Radhyam. So, but worship of demigods is not difficult, but becoming a devotee of Vasudev Krishna, not so easy. But, but, if we adhere to the principles, follow in the footsteps of the authorities, as Lord Shiva is saying, then one can very easily become a devotee. And Prabhupada says, it's confirmed by Prahlad Maharaj. He was just a child, he became a great devotee. But otherwise, mental speculators can't. Devotional service is such a special attainment. It can only be acquired by a person who has surrendered to a pure devotee. Prabhupada concludes the purport 
by saying, as confirmed by Prahlad Maharaj, Mahiya Sampada Rajobishe Kam Niskinchananam Navranita Yavat. Unless one accepts the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee, who is free from all material contamination, one cannot enter into the devotional service of the Lord. That's Srimad Bhagavatam 7, 5, 32, verse 77. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the dearmost objective of all auspicious benedictions. A human being who sings the song sung by me, by Lord Shiva, can please the personality, Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such a devotee being fixed in the Lord's devotional service can acquire whatever he wants from the Supreme Lord. Prabhupada um, quotes from Bhagavad Gita chapter 6 verse 22. I'll just repeat the translation he gives. If one can attain the favor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he has nothing to aspire for, nor does he des desire any other gain. So we remember when Druva became perfect by austerity, he saw the Supreme Lord face to face. He was offered whatever benediction he wanted. But Druva said he didn't want anything. He was, he was perfectly satisfied just by seeing the Lord and being engaged in the Lord's service. So except for devotional service, whatever we want is just maya, illusion. Lord Krishna, I mean Lord Chaitanya said, <clears throat> Every living entity is an eternal servant of the Lord. Therefore, when one engages in the service of the Lord, one realizes the highest perfection of life. So a faithful servant, Srila Prabhupada says, can fulfill any desire by the grace of the master, and one who engages in devotional service has nothing to aspire for separately. Prabhupada concludes the purport by saying, all his desires are fulfilled simply by engaging constantly in the Lord's loving service. Lord Shiva shows us that any devotee can be successful simply by chanting the prayers which he has recited. Verse 78. A devotee who rises early in the morning and with folded hands chants these prayers sung by Lord Shiva and gives facility to others to hear them certainly becomes free from all bondage to fruit of activity. Okay, in the purport, Prabhupada says, Mukti, liberation, means becoming free from the results of fruit of activities. Prabhupada refers to Srimad Bhagavatam 2, 10, 6. Important verse, Muktir Hitvanyata Rupam, Swarupena Vyavastiti. Mukti, what is mukti? Means giving up all other activities and just being situated in your real constitutional position. That's mukti. Swarup, swarupena, vyavastati. But in conditional life, we're just entangled in all sorts of fruit of activities. Karma bandana, the bonds of fruit of activity. So as long as the mind is absorbed in fruit of activity, you have to manufacture plans. I'll do this, I'll do that to achieve happiness. But devotional service, bhakti yoga is different. 
It means acting according to the order of the supreme authority. No need to speculate. And when we act for him, we don't become entangled by fruit of activities. Prabhupada gives classic example of Arjuna fighting because Krishna wanted him to. So because Krishna ordered it, Krishna was responsible for it. Therefore, Arjuna was not responsible for the outcome of uh, the, the fighting. Yes. So as far as devotional service is concerned, Prabhupada makes the point, even hearing and chanting is as good as acting with our body, mind and senses doing this, doing that in devotional service. Hearing and chanting, they're also activities of the senses. And Prabhupada concludes the purport by saying, when the senses are utilized for one's own sense gratification, they entangle one in karma. But when they're used for the satisfaction of the Lord, they establish one in bhakti. All right, and we come to verse 79. My dear sons of the king, the prayers I have recited to you are meant for pleasing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Super Soul. I advise you to recite these prayers, which are as effective as great austerities. In this way, when you're mature, your life will be successful and you'll certainly achieve all your desired objectives without fail. So Prabhupada gives a one sentence purport to conclude this chapter 24 of the fourth canto. Prabhupada says, if we persistently engage in devotional service, certainly all our desires will be fulfilled in due course of time. Persistently means um, without, I mean, it's particularly without being disappointed by any challenges that may come, but rather just pushing on despite the challenges. Yeah, that sort of, that's the idea of being persistent. You won't let anything stop you. You just carry on to achieve your good goal. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.